Hold on. Aw, it broke. Like the big fish that got away, many of Mexico's brightest scientists and researchers have packed their bags and left the country. The Mexican government estimating that 1.2 million of them have taken jobs elsewhere around the world over the last 30 years. In France, for example, Mexican chemist and bacteriologist Dr. Raquel Hurtado Ortiz was hired at the country's prestigious Institut Pasteur. Though as a child, she dreamed of becoming a scientist in Mexico. But by the time she had become a PhD student in Mexico, that dream began to change when she found out how little she'd be paid teaching a college science course in Mexico, less than $5 an hour. Por eso me pagaban por hora. <laughs> y bueno, en ese tiempo sí, el salario, el salario neto eran sí, como alrededor de 90 pesos. She then applied at a private university in Mexico hoping to earn more money, only to be told during her interview that she'd be paid just 50 cents more an hour. 100 pesos por hora. Y yo dije, bueno, es que parece que es muy poco. Y la, y lo que ella me contestó, que lo tengo muy presente hoy en día, me dijo, bueno, sí, pero yo sé cómo están, cómo, cuánto les pagan en las universidades públicas. Y entonces, y yo sé también que si usted no quiere, va a haber otros profesores que están esperando allá afuera. She prefers not to make public the vast increase in salary she now earns in France because she says she doesn't want to embarrass Mexico any more than the country has already embarrassed itself, she says, for the notoriously low wages most Mexicans are all too familiar with. The salaries for Mexican scientists with PhDs working outside of Mexico range from $50,000 annually to more than $200,000 a year in some cases. The University of Toronto is celebrating the recent arrival of another big fish in the science world that got away from Mexico, noted scientist Alan Aspuruguzic, a child prodigy representing Mexico in the International Chemistry Olympiad, doing his PhD at Cal Berkeley, becoming a full professor at Harvard, his group of researchers described as an anarchist's collective of young scientists using artificial intelligence and robotics to find better ways to filter water and harvest solar energy, among other things. Research, he says, that cannot be so easily done in Mexico because of the snail's pace Mexico takes in funding research. Compared to in Canada or in other countries Hospital Guzik has visited, like South Korea, he says famous for a Korean phrase, bali bali, that means hurry, hurry, when it comes to doing science. It's called bali bali, it means hurry, hurry, right? Hurry, hurry, boom, bali bali. Mexico needs a little bit of bali bali in terms of, of, of how we approach science. Go, vamos, vamos, vamos. He says part of what's slowing down science in Mexico are sweeping new anti-corruption laws that, while necessary, make it exceedingly difficult to obtain grants and research funding from the government. Because every little thing in a line item budget, he says, is over scrutinized and there is little flexibility. Some silly things that happen only in Mexico in some sense is that if you put a line item and says, I'm going to buy a cookie for my research, but six months later you realize that you need a lollipop. This is very common in research. Research is, you know, research is like opening a car and trying to fix a car. or It's a, something unexpected. It's like if you ask me, how am I going to fix a car? How am I going to carry out research? Of course, I always write grants and I write your research plan, but the research plan is made to be deviated from. But with the spending rules in Mexico, oh no, you, you sell lollipop. You know, like, I cannot give you a popsicle or whatever. And therefore, uh, that's also really bad. So research funds have to be uh, spent within categories, uh, and they have to be flown re flowed really, really quickly to the universities without all the bureaucracy. Professor Aspero Guzik mentors many graduate students that have left Mexico over the years. One of them, he says, Benjamin Sanchez Langeling, who he met while at Harvard. He is a student from Guanajuato in Mexico. Um, that Guanajuato was so proud when he came to Harvard that uh, they had a boss uh, with his photo. They call it the Benji boss. So it's quite funny to get that picture. Uh, you should show it here in your, in your video. Uh, yeah, the bus, <laughs> it's, uh, there's only like two or three people from the, my university that have gone to Harvard University. And so they were like, yeah, we're, we, we, wanna, we wanna promote your image. <laughs> 
Promoting his image is nice, he says, but as a student in Mexico, he says he often became frustrated from a shortage of resources in the country, such as reagents used in chemical analysis. If you're a scientist and you're doing experimental work, uh, just getting uh, reagents, if you have to get them from the, another country, you have to export them, and uh, the customs is really bad for that. Even if you order it, it might take six months to arrive to the border. Some Mexican customs officials, it's been said, have been known to take bribes to move science materials through the border more quickly. A lot of times if you want to do things in a fast way, uh, you have to do it in a maybe illegal way. Or, and, and, and so, you know, then it gets, it's, it's just like there's a lot of barriers to doing things. I, I go a lot of times when I'm doing teaching to like schools and hear about people having to like take care of like, oh, do, don't use too much of this like substance, don't use too much of this, or you, you can't do an experiment this week because we don't have any material, and you don't have that, at least in the university that I've been in, in, in the United States or Europe, right? He says he's not surprised that of an estimated 160,000 Mexican postgraduate students studying abroad, many have shown little interest in returning to Mexico anytime soon. In the United States, several studies have reported that 70% of Mexican migrants who've come lawfully to the U.S. say they won't return to Mexico. Some say that's quite a brain drain. Definitely there is a brain drain, yeah. Though the term brain drain, says Mexican government spokesman Eduardo Nino, is a bit unfair. Perhaps the term brain drain is a bit, uh, 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 sort of, it's, it's a bit out of fashion, I would say, given the way the world has globalized. He says today Mexico actually requires science and research doctoral students to travel abroad in what he says has become, in many respects, a borderless scientific community. Scientists, doctors, professionals, highly skilled people um, have no borders. They go back and forth. They move freely to where there is a need, where there is a uh, sound uh, monetary recognition for their labor. For example, outside Chicago, Illinois, here at Argonne National Laboratory and Fermi National Acceleratory Laboratory, both specializing in high energy particle physics. Mexican born scientists assist the US government's Department of Energy, engaging in some of the most important science research known to man, such as the origin of the universe. One of these noted Mexican born scientists is the acclaimed Juan de Pablo, Lou Family Professor in Molecular Engineering at the University of Chicago and Vice President for Research at U.S. National Laboratories for the University. Engaged in scientific research, he says, that will have a direct impact on the future of the planet. That is very exciting. Just uh, the um, magnitude of the projects that are being pursued at these laboratories is uh, awe-inspiring. First, improve our understanding of nature so that we can uh, one day learn to, uh, to uh, help it. I think that's the right word. And, uh, and using to the benefit of, uh, of uh, everyone. Now, I grew up in Mexico City. I remember the chemistry set, the first one that I had and the experiments that I was doing then. It was just the typical volcano where you, uh, you know, mixed a few substances and eventually smoke comes out of the volcano and it explodes. College student De Pablo would credit his science instructors back in Mexico for preparing him for doctoral work at Cal Berkeley. I received a phenomenal education in Mexico with uh, teachers, instructors that were uh, every bit as capable as uh, any teacher or, or researcher anywhere in the, in the world. CONACYT, Mexico's National Council on Science, has launched a public campaign encouraging Mexican doctoral students abroad to return to Mexico. They can drive the progress and create more of a culture of pursuing this work in, uh, in, in Mexico and coming back to, uh, to Mexico. One of the most multi-talented medical researchers to have ever left Mexico is Dr. Hector Rascado Flores. Professor of Physiology and Biophysics, researching treatments for patients with the lung disease cystic fibrosis here at the Chicago Medical School at Rosalind Franklin University, north of Chicago, who's also performed internationally as a composer of classical music 
researching the effects of music on dementia and the brain development of children. Performing a symphonic suite he has composed about the human body called Body Notes. It's called Body Notes. It describes the process of life, the life cycle. The beginning of, of life in the uterus and at the end of the cycle is called apoptosis, which is the process by which our cells are programmed to die. And like the death of human cells, he says his early career as a medical researcher in Mexico seemed to be fading away because of a lack of support forcing him to leave Mexico. I tried to return to Mexico. I tried two times to return to Mexico to do research. But unfortunately, the situation at that time was very unstable in the, the economy, and they were not able to support to do the research that, that I, I was trained to do. Presently, we ask him to compose a piece of music that might best represent the state of science in Mexico in the last 30 years. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to play some, something very unstable. And that, that would represent the anxiety of, of a country trying to, to find uh, its way. So I thought, well, maybe I can be more useful to my country, to Mexico, if I work in the US and I try to do the best possible science, students from Mexico to train them that they could go back or, 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 or not, but to, to be well trained and also to try to bring uh, students up to higher education that would be from Mexican origin. And that's exactly what I had been doing. He then composes this piece of music representing what he hopes may be a gradual awakening in Mexico to how important science is to the country. A country, to be a country, you need to have everything. You need to have arts, you need to have science, you need to have industry, education, because every element nourishes its other and, and makes the country develop and strong. Now with the new government, there is indications that there is much more appreciation to, to this work and we hope that it will uh, translate into fewer uh, scientists, Mexicans living in the country, and perhaps even a reverse tide coming back uh, to the country. It takes us 20 years to do that. Those who do not return will continue serving uh, or helping Mexico in many ways. And more importantly, they will continue serving um, or helping humanity, no matter where they are, in so many different ways. Our presence abroad actually generates a lot of other opportunities for Mexico. Even just for image, people see that we Mexicans uh, are actually a diverse uh, uh, um, country that has different, different uh, professions that are represented across the world. So it's kind of like when you see a Mexican soccer player playing in the, in the um, Premier League. You say, well, okay, the Mexicans play soccer well. Well, I mean, part of our presence here also says the Mexicans do science well. Some say that in a rapidly developing country like Mexico, with a growing trillion dollar a year economy, it's not rocket science to realize that more scientists and researchers would probably stay in Mexico if they're paid appropriately and given the support and resources they need. And it's not just these celebrated Mexican scientists and researchers advocating for this. Joining them is perhaps Mexico's greatest living scientist, who we recently profiled, Dr. Mario Molina, who also left Mexico for the U.S. as a young person, who would go on to win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1995 for discovering that man-made chemicals were burning a hole in the ozone layer. Mexico, says Molina, needs to step up and invest much more in science. Mexico, like many developing countries, invests too little, something like half a percent of their GDP on basic science. That's very little. We have so much uh, to give, so much talent to share, that it's a, it's a terrible tragedy that they don't get to, to do it.
Dr. Roscado says until the Mexican government can deliver a more consistent and sustained financial commitment to science and research and more overall support, the state of science in Mexico will likely remain an unstable one.